so let's go inside and check on the fleet how they're doing inside the pro shop for the winter storage I haven't seen the cars in a while and uh whoa what the hell is that doing in here it should be a, a rumblebee sitting there not a ford crown vic guess cousin mike got bored and wanted to take his little baby off for a ride huh well while it's here we might as well do a ride rundown on it <laughs> in case you were wondering yes this is the uh the trooper version we even have the floodlight <laughs> well, let's see what she can do we don't have a key in the ignition i don't see one on the seats i wonder where you put it maybe hmm Maybe like Arnold Schwarzenegger here in Terminator and Oh. Oh, there it is. Up the visor. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, this baby's a brute. Tire pressure monitor on. 125,000 on the dash. Oh yeah. That's that's the ticket. <laughs> Where were you on the night of January 4th? <laughs> uh, you know, every car should have one of these. <laughs> oh. Let's pull this thing in the driveway here, and I'll set her up, and we'll I'll do a review of this pig. Hey guys, Steve from BNS Customs. Today we're going to be doing a. Oh. Well, I guess. Uh, I guess someone's ears must have been ringing. And, uh, yeah, here comes the rumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> Were your ears ringing? <laughs> What's up? Oh, you got dirty. Oh, well then, well, it's dirty. We might as well take it for a ride, shouldn't we? Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so I did a ride run down this car. I did drive it, but I didn't get to have a chance to have the camera in the car with us when we did it. Uh, I do have a window mount now, but since Cousin Mike is here with me, We'll just let him drive and uh, have a good time. Let me wreck it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Better you than me. <laughs> Thanks, man. I don't think we're taking out of traction control today. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. It's very icy out this morning, actually. So, but I want everyone to see and hear what it sounds like to be in this thing and uh, get her going here. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, slip. <laughs> Yeah, don't put us into a ditch. No, <laughs> definitely not. Maybe at the top where it's sunny by the farm, you can probably do a. No, even there, man. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, it's all marbles and salt all across yeah, the grass. Yeah. Oh, so. yeah. It's insane. I mean, still fun. <laughs> so now that you've driven the car for about, oh, 12 hours, two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, I only got two hours right now. We got 2,200 miles on it since I purchased it. So why do you. So, after getting back in it now, what do you think of getting of it? Uh, you know, you're just starting to regret the car payment as you're going. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, month one is while long, it's in the in storage. Yep. Um, yeah. And then you get that sunny day, and and that smile doesn't come off your face. Yep. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. It's yeah. It it's everything you want. If you like old muscle cars, this is a great, great freaking option. I agree. Uh, you've got a couple little rattles when you when you put it in sport mode. You get that nice exhaust tone out of it. And you get a couple interior vibrations going on that shouldn't be there, but just remind you of every classic car you've ever been in. So uh, yeah, you know, it also seems to exaggerate too when it's cold out. The plastic, for whatever reason, yeah. it seems louder. Or like I know my Firebirds, when it gets cold out, all you hear is the creaking and the, the moaning of the interior as you're driving it. But there's a solution to that. It's called the volume knob on your yeah, radio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was a uh, Anthrax Public Enemy kind of day. Amen. So. <laughs> But uh, no, overall, um, I, I cannot wait for the warmer weather to get these tires a little bit uh, more attached to the ground so we can have some real fun. <laughs> um, I definitely want to start throwing it in corners. Oh, uh, yeah. That's today is, today's not today. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We'll be throwing into a ditch. But we do have some... Uh, it's weird. Um, when you go from sport mode or from uh, regular to take the traction control, just the sport, even if you're at a low RPM range, it seems like the whole car just wants to wake up. So even at like... Oh, you could be in fifth gear, the car wants to go. It doesn't matter in this thing. But if you're just holding your RPMs around 2,500 and you hit this, the car just relaxes and breathes all on its own without touching the pedal. It's really, oh, yeah, yeah. It's really weird. It it's probably some of the throttle response, actually. That when you hit that sport mode button, it, it changes the throttle response on yeah, you. Whatever, so. whatever magic gypsies are in the motor, it, yep. it wakes them right up. They're A lot happy. of them do that. 
I noticed when I had my M3, my M3, it was really noticeable on my M3 when I hit the sport mode button that the, the throttle response was night and day oh, it's with insane. that. Oh, uh, I, I think even in sport where they say the traction control is gone, um, it'll it'll still give you a little bit of, little bit of assistance there as you're going sideways. Right. Uh, which I found out this morning on the ice. <laughs> Thank God. So, yeah. <laughs> so I still have the right quarter panel intact. <laughs> Oh, you only got about two months left before you gotta worry about giving it back. Woo! <laughs> Little second gear pull. Yep, coming about right above 60 miles an hour on out of second. That's nice. Yeah. I'm sure this could. Uh, well, maybe not because the Viper is geared different. I know I can hit 80 out of second in the Viper, oh. but it's got uh, three. It's got different gearing though. So this. Yeah, you got taller gears. Yeah, this. yeah. I would say no. I think I think we could pull a 65, 70 pull yeah, out of it. I, I agree. mean, if you're really being the rebel yep. here. Um. Like I said, suppose at 182 top end, we are definitely going to find that out this spring. Um, That's a, I don't want to be in the car when you do that. <laughs> you can be behind me in the Viper. <laughs> That's, I'll be a mile behind you in the Viper. I've, I've had my fill with going over 100. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I had that uh, Chevy S10 when I was younger. Um, put a small block in it, two-wheel drive it. Uh, top end on that was 172. It's as far as I could push it before I really got scared and there was still pedal left. Oh, really? So um, you took the governor off it? Oh, we put a small block with a big Oh, you had your own, yeah. I <laughs> no governor. Uh, 750 Holly with the vacuum secondaries. I had no idea how to build the motor. I was reading my Jex catalog and throwing everything I possibly could at that block. <laughs> um, and it survived. We were going, um, we were with my wife's uh, Z car club for Nissan Z cars. And one of the guys put uh, an LS engine into his like 280Z. And uh, we're going down the parkway towards Canada. And they opened it up, him and another guy, and they passed a cop doing about a buck forty. So this cop pulls out and goes after him. And we finally meet up with the guy. The cop let us all go. He was very nice. But we're at the gas station, the guy with the LS engines talking, he was like, Yeah, I was going about 160 and hit 170, and the, the rev limit started bouncing. He goes, Oh, I just blew the engine. No, it was the governor on the computer. <laughs> But yeah, I was uh, I was addicted to speed at a, at a young age. Really, it was daddy issues. Uh, <laughs> Dad was looking at a, uh, a T-type Trans Am uh, turbo V6. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, told me he would have bought it for me, but I couldn't handle the power. Um, and then it turned into a typical New Yorker and smoked my beer. Watch this. And yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's been on ever since. Yep. So, I had the same problem. Daddy only let me get a V6 Firebird. Yep. Ryan had the V8, and he could get all the parts. I had no parts for my car, and uh, look what that did to me. It's uh, depressing. Like, no, I got seven cars, and I got a complex about it. <laughs> yeah, I had um, I got into motorcycles for a little while. I, I enjoyed those. My uh, I had an '86 VFR that was my favorite. Um, What's the one with the drive shaft? Uh, that was the uh, the Boulevard M109R. That was a monster V twin. That thing was great. 1800 cc, just incredible. Oh, oh straight still. Sorry, thought it was. And, uh, yeah, the VFR top end was about 180. I did get to ride my friend's Busa. I got it to 199 before I panicked, and I didn't realize Jeez. 200 miles an hour was the holy grail. <laughs> uh, had I known that, I would have just stayed on it for a couple more seconds. Well, but. only you know that. You could just say you hit 200. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> You're not a lie detector. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that was as close as 200 I ever got and probably ever will be, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, I'm still intact. I still got all my pieces. Yeah, and a bike? I don't want to get an open road? It, it was insane. The bike was so comfortable at over 150. Like, my bike, 182, that thing was shaking. You knew you were doing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that Busa, at, at 198, it was smooth as glass. And I'm like, I'm going to die. So, uh, yeah, we backed, we backed down, and uh, that was the last time I rode Yeah, I'd be afraid to even move the bars. It just, you start, you start that uh, harmonic shake, <laughs> yeah, and you're gone, man. Little tanks left. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been pushing, trying to get my cars up to that speed for a long, long time, and now, you know, kids are getting older, I'm getting older. Yeah, it's uh, not worth it now. I don't know, I'm still not wiser. I know. Turn, <laughs> hang on left up here. Yeah, Brian scared the crap out of me one year, and I, we went for his Viper, and he, I was in the passenger seat, he took it over 100, and I was just like, get me out. <laughs> I don't like being in the, the passenger, passenger seat going that fast. <laughs> it's different when you're driving. No, truly, true. true. When you took me out with the uh, with the Silver Viper, we were only doing... Oh, yeah, seat. yeah, it's a different sensation being in the passenger seat. Yeah, you're you're backing backwards. bugs off the windshield, and I'm holding on for dear life, going, please don't kill me. <laughs> 65 was a call. That's 80. We'll stop there. there. Yeah, I don't blame you. That's good. <laughs> That's good enough. But uh, we're still on really slick pavement. We got you know, really, patches. Yeah, really that's all you need, though. The, the thrill of the car is going 0 to 80 really quick. It's not maintaining 100 miles an hour, 120. That's a whole other level of uh, 
a balls, I'll say, but I, I do like getting on the expressway. I only had one chance to really have some. I love I cars. We got no one in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> we were going down a, a nice expressway here in New York, and uh, two kids decided they were going to play in their cars. I didn't realize we were playing. Um, That's a first. <laughs> and I wasn't ready for it. <laughs> it's right here. So uh, they, they blew me away. Um, I saw them coming up in the rear view. Of course, I, I get to the right-hand side to let them go around. Well, they waited for me. I caught up to them. This time I was ready. So uh, I grabbed third gear right around 60 miles an hour and just pounded it. Um, I didn't let up to about 150. That's when my wife was screaming at me. I bet. <laughs> um, she gave me the, you want to slow down? I'm like, what? And uh, <laughs> this car, you really didn't feel it. I mean, occasionally, like on the side roads where you live, uh, you'll, you'll get those little whoops and the back tires will leave the ground yeah. and you see the RPM yeah. spike for a second and re-grip. Um, it's, it's enough to make that's, you clinch. That's country driving, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's it's, how it is. It's, <laughs> it's something different. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm hoping to get to a track this year. I know this is more of a straight line car, but uh, with the brake setup they got and how tight the suspension is, I, I think we can have a lot of fun on a road course. I mean, a lot of fun. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I think I uh, definitely go to the take it to the Empire Dragway where, where we went. Yeah, um, we I'd recommend taking a trailer though. It's like one of us got flat tire like I had. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, I have yet to wipe the smile off my face with this vehicle. It's, yeah, it's great. Um, like I said, I, I I was always building something stupid, and uh, I was in the process of building three more. Um, since purchasing this, I believe I'm given up, which is odd for me. <laughs> so uh, I think we're gonna tuck the projects away and uh, let someone else have some fun with all that I've created and just uh, enjoy the. Crap well, before those go, we have to put a camera on though, especially the the Ferrari Lambo. Yeah, the get the, that the, on the, film. The full Lambo. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so half Fiero, half Lambo. Yeah. Um, that was probably gonna be one of my best but scariest. Uh, basically, it was a motorcycle with a 350 in the back. Yeah, it's something else. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it, it, it looks cool. Um, I never really got to drive it, drive it, but uh, I enjoyed building it. Had a blast doing it. Uh, a lot of looks, a lot of a lot of conversation started over that car. Um, but yeah, with with this now, I can uh, hopefully get out with a couple of Viper buddies and go enjoy my summer. Hell yeah! <laughs> so in a car show or two. Yeah, I'm looking forward to a lot of uh, a lot of long drives this year. So we got some friends in the Corvette Club we're gonna get with, and uh, oh, nice. Yeah, we'll see where we uh, where it takes us. But yeah, it's time to put some mileage on and, and see how much damage we can do. So my neighbor right here actually has got the Hellcat and the 392. So I gotta get a picture of all these cars together one day too. He came over and saw it in the, the pro shop. He liked the car a lot, the shaker and everything. He's got the uh, the regular one, right, with the twin scoops. He's got the Hellcat, and he's got like a 2011, I think, or 2010 uh, 392. It's blue with white stripes. It's really nice. Yeah. So it's just like this, but it doesn't have the shaker and gotcha. some of the other things. Yeah, my uh, my thing with the the Hellcat, I think, would have been a great addition. I do like the 392. This is this is a tough car to go have a blast with. So for the extra. Uh, Twenty thousand dollars for a uh, for an extra couple of horsepower. Yep. Yeah. Just it wasn't worth it for me. Yeah, I think Brian was mentioning yesterday that the Hellcats have come down. They're in the 50, forty to fifties now. Yeah, you can yeah. grab a used one all day long for about forty eight thousand yeah. dollars, which is just uh, absolutely amazing. It's just it's a lot of car for the street and uh, the Demon. Um, again, Dodge just went. So yeah, he far said um, the, the Hellcat. You could get that horsepower of the Hellcats, but with a chip, the programming will be as fast as the Demon. You, know, you can also change a pulley here and there. And, well, that's what they were. There's more power in there still. For this one, it. I don't know if I'd have to lose the shaker scoop, but Dodge offers a factory supercharger. Uh, if you install by their technicians, it does not void your warranty. Yeah. Um, this will bring you up to roughly just under 700 horse at that point. And after driving this, do you think you need that much more? Well, that's the thing. So far, <laughs> I know. It's like, well, you, you can't use it. I mean, <laughs> on dry pavement, I can break the wheels loose at 60, 70 miles an yeah. hour just yeah. by hammering the clutch out. Yeah. Um, it's. It, it's, it's bragging like, rights is what it is. Unless you're at a track with like super grip tires tubbed out, you're never going to be able to apply all that power. I'm sure people can. I'm not going to, don't put me on, pull me on that. <laughs> I'm sure there's people out there planning it just fine, but well, for the, the average of us the, people. The thing that cracks me up is every video I've watched with the Challengers, the 392s or the Hellcats going against, because um, a lot of these imports, I mean, they're turning high horsepower, they're, they're lightweight, this is a really heavy car. Um, they always got this guy and he's always you know turning off sport mode going right into track mode and it's just there's so much horsepower there on an actual road course leave the traction control on if you're gonna race these guys Keep oh look you got a third on a road course yeah, yeah if, if you get out of third gear doing that it's just insanity <laughs> um 
I, I hope to be as insane as them, actually. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see. It's going to be um, hopefully a beautiful marriage. We're going to burn off a couple sets of tires and, and really get to, to learn her. But, uh, awesome. Yeah. That was a great ride, Mike. Let's, uh, let's talk a little about the, the Crown Vic over there. I, I know the audience are dying to hear about the Crown Vic. Yes, yeah, the, the 2010 <laughs> Crown Vic donor car, basically. <laughs> let's go take a look. Yes, sir. Well, Mike, how'd you come about this beast? Okay, the, the Crown Victoria was an accidental purchase. Um, <laughs> my son had turned 16. We were looking for a vehicle that would be safe for him and uh, reliable. We know that the, um, the police have a pretty regimented schedule on the oil changes and everything. Um, the car was covered in snow when we were first looking at it. And I thought the windshield said $17.99 for the sales price. <laughs> so my 16-year-old son, he is excited as can be. He wants this car. I'm like, two grand? We can do this. Uh, lo and behold, they defrost the car for us, and I'm already talking the car up. I really like it. It's got posi traction, 4.6 liter V8. It's not going to be real fast, but it's going to be fun. And, uh... Of course, we get there and it's seven thousand nine hundred. Oh. At this point, we're committed, so we call the bank. We get the loan. He's happy. He's making his own car payments. Um, long story even longer. He joins the Air Force. I have another young man coming up to get his license. Yep. So we kept it for the winter ride to keep the Challenger a little bit more happier. Um, Steve and I will be doing the winter car project for me this yes. summer, which will be a. Uh, going to be very heartbreaking for a lot of Pontiac fans and, and for a lot of truck fans, but for me it's going to be something I've always wanted to do. So, it's not the Le Mans, is it? Oh, it's a semi Le Mans convertible. We're dropping on a six liter suburban frame and making her a Yeah, my heart just my heart just broke. Yeah, it's going to be painful. <laughs> you know, there's not many Le Mans stuff. They all got turned into GTOs. Yeah, well, we're going to hold on to all the original equipment and we're not going to do anything that's going to modify the body too hard. So, we should be able to, if we ever have to put it back to two wheel drive, it'll just be a matter of putting the body back on the frame and done. Go. Oh, all right. Let's, I'm all for it. <laughs> but, yeah, if you have a child and you know they're going to have fun with the car, this is definitely, um, it's pretty cool. Oh, it, it literally it, almost. <laughs> I mean, come on, you can't even get out of the back seat, right? You can't get out of the back How seat. many scumbags do you think were back there? I don't even want to think about it. It was a Chiefs car. So did now, not did you pull the rear seat and look for anything behind the, under the rear seat? We actually yanked out the seats. It originally came with the, uh, it had a vinyl seat in the back and two really ugly, uncomfortable seats up front, which I'm sure are great when you have a bolt to dust on. For driving around, not so much. Right. We did grab some interior out of a Mercury Grand Marquis. Uh, installed that just to make it did, a little you, better. Did you find anything under the seat? What I'm asking. Any, no. Any paraphernalia no or anything? Oh I man, we those good. are the best stories. <laughs> um, again, the car it's it's kind of bulletproof. You can actually hear I, I hear the transmissions on these are actually beefed up. Yeah, they are actually. I hear that too. Suspension the too. Instead of bushings. The suspension and I can't get it. Yeah, I can one hand it. We hardly ever open it. She gets an oil change. We'll find a nest. Whoa! I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Um. It, this is the only thing I've done so far. We put a new alternator in and a new thermostat. Uh, car sensitive with the emissions up here. Um, if the car motor doesn't heat up quick enough, it'll actually throw your engine light. It's uh, we, This is our second thermostat in three years. Uh, we did have to replace the AC motor, the fan motor. Um, Man, I tell you, for 120,000 miles, it looks pretty good. She's a clean car. Wow. She's got the bulletproof plate on the bottom for your skid plate. So uh, yeah. you can pretty much run over everything. <laughs> Again, it was purchased for a 16 year old boy um he had fun he promised me he would never drift it uh if you take a look at the dashboard we have a gopro mount yeah i saw that, that on, it. on with lots of videos <laughs> of him drifting so <laughs> my favorite feature i already played with on the video was the the, the, the lamp <laughs> yeah the lamp is awesome the fog yeah. light man oh we are love that car one color this summer i have a couple of uh Lexus wheels are we gonna dip it like are we gonna plastic dip it we probably are yeah, yeah that'll be the way to go i was gonna do a bunch of body work on it and shoot it and uh nah that's, by that's... the time you're done you're putting three thousand dollars nope. into a car that's worth about a grand 400 bucks man we can uh, pick any color you want yeah i'm thinking we're gonna go charcoal gray possibly <laughs> with a purple pearl on it there you go and then, uh i've got these they're almost a platinum colored rims that look a lot like the Challenger rims. Yeah. I got them off a of Lexus. I believe the bolt pattern is the same. That's going to be cool. It'll kick the wheels out a little bit, give her a little bit better stance for the, for the next kick coming up. And, yeah, but... Uh, put some time, vinyl stripes on it, too. <laughs> <laughs> winter time, the car's an absolute riot. The posi traction just makes you feel like you're doing a million miles an hour going around a corner when you're doing three. <laughs> Sensation of speed. That's what counts, man. Yeah, uh, trunk space is great. Fit at least six bodies back there. Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, yeah, good times. Cool. Had a lot of fun. <laughs> so thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you liked the video. Remember to like the videos and subscribe. We'll see you next time. See you later, man. See ya.